Welcome to the Tuesday Review. I'm James. I'm Nathan. And I'm Callum. And tonight we are reviewing Bloodshot. Bloodshot, Bl- baby. Bloodshot? Bloodshot. Bloodshit. Every, yeah, every time I type it into my phone, it says blood shit. I don't, it's disgusting. <laughs> Do you have any other health issues? That we- <laughs> <laughs> Which um, is actually quite appropriate. Uh, <laughs> yeah. One, because of the coronavirus. But two, because the movie was pretty shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Unfortunately. So, I'm going to go on a long like preamble to set up some context for the, this review. There's this there's a bit of backstory. Yeah, because I'm a huge Valiant Comics fan, especially Bloodshot. When I was a kid, I don't remember exactly. Some I think someone either gave them to me, maybe my dad bought them. This was back still when news agents had the single issue comic books back I rem- in the I remember the back good, in the day the good old days the good old days we were too young to appreciate it yeah but the- uh, I miss it now that it's yeah. gone um, so I can't remember so I think maybe someone must have got it for me and Valiant Comics were a sort of smaller independent comic book company publisher that were you know obviously not as big as DC or Marvel or whatever. And I got three comics, or four comics from them. I got Turok, Bloodshot. That, that was a video game tying comic, assumedly? Uh, no, I think the comic came first. Oh, interesting. Yeah, comic, and then the games were an adaptation. Um, Turok, Bloodshot, Eternal Warrior, and Ninjak. And those became my three favorite uh, Valiant characters in that order. Bloodshot was my favorite, Eternal Warrior second, Ninjak third. They have a whole bunch of other characters. There's the Harbinger, who are like the Valiant version of like the X-Men. They're like the mutants. There's um, Exo Mano War. He's like a guy in a cool like uh, exoskeleton robot suit. And there's a whole bunch of other characters. But those three characters, like just... I had a couple issues from each character and I just loved them. And Bloodshot especially. Unfortunately, with... This was in the 90s, and unfortunately, Valiant never really reprinted their older comic books. You know, if you want to read uh, Batman Long Halloween, it's in yeah. every comic book shop in the yeah. world. It's online. It's a staple. Yeah. It's like, and they they also have like, you know, if you want to read Spider-Man number one to, to number 20, you know, the original 60s run, they're printed in... Hard Arg- like archival yeah, editions, pa- yeah, paperback editions, hardcover editions. Quick, quick A-side. Are the nerds hoarding comic books? No. No. But what if they get stuck inside for two weeks without no. comic No, 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 no. Don't be silly. <laughs> There's digital comics too. Yeah, it's digital comics. Um, <laughs> I'm sure they have enough likes comics. Digital. Yeah, I'm sure they have enough comics to keep it occupied <laughs> until this blows over. Um, Nathan, it's B-side. You always say A-side. I've it's, no- an a- it's an A-side. No, the A-side is the main track. B-side No, no, is- he means like an aside. Yeah. Oh, A-side. He's okay. saying it weird, that's all. <laughs> yeah, you're, you separated into two words. Anyway, my I've noticed that in a few episodes <laughs> yeah. while I'm editing. I'm like, what is he talking about? And he's, anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, so Valiant never really re-released their, or reprinted their old 90s stuff. So, for years, I just had a couple of, vol- uh, couple of issues, and I just kind of was happy with that, and, you know, obviously always wanted more. And Bloodshot, I always thought, would be a really cool movie, because he's basically... You know, in the 90s version, he's he was like a, a mafia gangster who gets killed and betrayed or whatever and then gets put into this experimental program, Project Rising Spirit, and um, they infuse his blood with nanites, little um, microscopic robots. robots, and he becomes like super strong and fast and, you know, he can um, heal like Wolverine kind of, um, and then he kind of breaks away from that. Because they use, they're going to use him as like a mindless assassin. He breaks away from that and he becomes like a mercenary, ends up working for the government. All this stuff is really cool. You know, simple action. You could make a great 90s style action movie out of that. So, for years I was always like, I want, I want a cool action movie. Then around, I don't know, 2012, I want to say, Valiant decided to come back, make a comeback. And they were like... We're going to reboot all our heroes. Like, you know, issue yeah. issue one, start again. And, you know, obviously more modern art and all that and different storylines. Um, and so, they printed that. And then they they kind of reprinted some of the old 90s stuff in like hardback editions. Yeah. But they're fucking expensive. They don't release them in Australia. 
You know, yeah. you have to import them. They're like I bought, I bought them because you know. But, <laughs> what else am I going to do? God, yeah, but <laughs> God feel damn, good about it. Yeah, but goddamn, like, come on, Valiant, like, just release them in paperback. I'd be happy you know, with that. God forbid, also digital releases. Like, I don't know. If yeah, you I don't know if digital, they did. But like, I know that. Um, there's a service called Comixology, which yeah. has a whole bunch of really interesting comics, originals yeah. too. Yeah. So, there's a service called, uh, it's like Comixology Now or whatever. It's like one of those, um, uh, Unlimited, Comics on, Comics on, Comics on, Con- Comics Unlimited or yeah, Comics Online? Yeah, Comixology Unlimited. Oh, Comixology. And uh, it's a service where you get to read comics for free. And I've been really interested in the Hellraiser comics, which yeah. are from a, um, Dark Horse? Anyway, a small yeah. a small publisher, not Marvel or DC. Yeah. Anyway, it's on Comixology uh, Unlimited, so I'm like, sweet, I'll pay for that. I don't mind paying a subscription for comics. Yeah. America only. But <laughs> so it's digital. Like, yeah. Now you want me to pay twenty bucks for something that people in America get for a monthly subscription? I'm like, come on. People don't know us nerds' pain of like we don't get anything in Australia, even when it makes sense for. Like, a- there's I, no physical. Pay they're losing out. customers. It's costing them nothing, and they're losing money. Basically. They don't have to ship them. Yeah, it's ones and zeros. Yeah, they're literally not producing. They are producing a product, obviously, as artists. Yeah. And, yeah but, but on the digital storefront, they're not producing stuff to sell in also, a physical. Chances sense. are, these comics I want also can't easily be obtained in store. No, you'd have to get the there's store no and import them. Or- we talked about it on our piracy episode. It's like there's often no alternative. You know, they they say, oh, you can't have this. But then they offer no alternative. Oh, don't get me wrong. I could buy them, but at or, a price that I'm yeah, not necessarily exactly. willing to pay. Or, or if there is an alternative, it's, it's unfair. It's yeah, like it's not un- prohibitively abs- expensive. Or, or frankly, it's just outright not what other people pay, and yeah. that makes me feel salty. You know yeah. what I mean? Which is fair. Yeah, true. Um, yeah, so they yeah like I re-released them, and I bought them because I'm a big fan. But yeah, they cost a fortune, and. Yeah, like I always wanted a Bloodshot movie, and then then the new stuff came out, and I I couldn't keep up with that because they're just comic books are too expensive. Yeah. But lately, I've been like going through all the new stuff and reading all the new Bloodshot as well. So I haven't read every Bloodshot ever, but I've read almost all the entire '90s run. I've read pretty much from the reboot until you know the last couple of years. I'm just I fell, I got a bit uh, far ahead of myself. Yeah. Um, because then you have to, there's like the Unity tie-in, which is like their Avengers kind yeah, of yeah. thing. So, I, now I have to go back and read that before I continue Bloodshot. Which but, is fine when it's Marvel, because like, like I said- Yeah, if, because like, it's easily the, available. Yeah, and, but like that's what, when I was trying to read The Darkness, it's like- Yeah, Whoa. where do you start? Yeah, it's like they've released issue two, but not issue one. It's like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so big fan and like, like since I'm since I was little- I love Bloodshot. He was my favorite. So cool. Always wanted a cool, like, 90s-style action movie. They should have made a toy where he's got, like... I'd say you can pull him apart and put him back together again, like... Yeah. Like, sort of like a rubber blood It would be cool. I mean, they don't do this in the movie because the movie kind of doesn't adapt the comic book well enough and ignores all the interesting stuff. But um, they should do, like, you click his head and his eyes turn red. That would be cool. But anyway... Um, yeah, so it's, ever since I was little, wanted a Bloodshot movie, thought of, you know, how you could do it, you know, it'd be really cool, you know, like, uh, this was before John Wick as well, so I was like, you know, you could do it like The Matrix, kind of really cool action scenes, you know, uh, lots of stunt work, you know, kind of like a 90s movie, and then John Wick came out, and I was like, well, there's your Bloodshot movie, like, and the the guys who directed the first John Wick were attached to do the Bloodshot movie at one point. So at that point I was like maybe this could be good and then of course they left and mm. and we ended up with this movie. Um yeah, so in saying all that <laughs> I was yeah, I wasn't excited for the movie because I knew it wasn't going to live up to yeah. my expectations which are higher than at other the, uh, other yeah. people. Um, because you're a fan. But yeah. in saying that I was kind of like willing to give the movie a chance. I was like I'm sure it'll be a Okay, action movie. But in hindsight, I think our first warning that this movie wasn't going to be great was probably when the fact that it didn't get delayed. Yeah, well, actually, it was really funny is we're like, we're watching the movie and just like, this is so bad. This is so boring. And Nathan, what did you say about oh, I the- leaned over and I'm like, y- like you, they release it now because when it bombs, 
they can just blame it on coronavirus. Yeah, which is so accurate. I was like, that's true. I didn't think of that. all the movies the studios have faith in yeah. are getting delayed. Yeah. Possibly indefinitely until a point where it's going to be profitable again. Yeah. So, movies right now, the studios are looking at it from a perspective of no, re- no movie we release now is going to make any money because people aren't going to the movies anymore. Yeah. So, the movies that we're seeing are the movies that the studios do not give a shit about. Yeah. And that's bloodshot. Yeah. So they can like I oh, say, oh, they that was blame, a write off. They can yeah. blame. They can blame out. coronavirus. Yeah. <laughs> basically, <laughs> even though yeah, it was never going to so, do well. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think that's this. This is a problem we talk about a lot on the show. Is from the beginning, the studio decisions were wrong. Yeah. Make this as a PG thirteen safe kind yeah. of superhero esque movie. It's a wrong it's like, hero. It's like you yeah. said uh, when we were walking out. It's like an AI generated a default action movie. Yeah. But I, I just mean like ma- I said, leaned over to Nathan. I said making a PG thirteen Bloodshot movie is like making a PG thirteen Punisher movie. It's pointless. Mm, like you yeah. lose so much. And you could tell they were trying so hard oh. to show the violence. Like because half of his power sort of revolves around the fact that he regenerates, right? Yeah. At least in action sequences, that's what you see. Yeah. Um, and the fact that they were trying to show that off, but also not show yeah. blood so or real violence. In the comics, when he gets shot, he bleeds, like flesh comes off. Like he can lose, in the newer comics, he can lose entire limbs and grow them back. Like Deadpool, basically. Sort of, but even more gory. And there's even bits in the newer comics, not in the 90s one, but in the newer ones, like there's a bit where he gets his face blown off and he's just like a skull, like a bleeding skull. And he's just like machine gunning guys, <laughs> like... It's so insane. And but all the violence this, in this movie yeah, but was like in like it had to, either a red filter over yeah, it. But to get a, around yeah. that is what I was getting at is he doesn't even bleed in this movie because it's, it's all gray. It's all his, all, every, his yeah, because of the nanites, it's all just like gray little robots. And like when he gets shot, it's just like a little hole. Now, you don't even see it because he's always wearing you know, clothes. So, and there's a couple of scenes where you see, you know, so we'll say impact points on bullets, but it's in a thermal imaging camera oh, and you the, just see yeah. the heat. They're trying so, so hard to not show violence that it physically hurt me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It ended up being more violent because it caused me physical pain. But like, yeah, there's bits where he, like he'll machine gun a guy like several rounds to the chest and the camera will just kind of pan away. <laughs> yeah. And it's like so bloodless. It's so obvious. Yeah. And like you said, if they do show blood, it'll be through some sort of filter. Because there were scenes where there was one where there was flares and snow and it gave off like a red, red, ad- glow. Ad- red yeah. glow. And so all the blood was like kind of obscured by the same color red. Yeah. Flower. And there was, it was flower, yeah. Um, and there was another scene where it was all through like a heat vision sort of infrared yeah. camera. And so you didn't see blood. You just saw like the heat from the impact of the weapons. The thing, the thing that pisses me off is, yeah, it's PG-13. They're trying to play it safe. But this was so obviously trying to play it safe. Yeah. And like they didn't even do things like in like in X-Men where Wolverine gets cut or shot. And then like a bullet comes out and he like heals. Like that was very safe PG-13, no blood. But it still kind of looked kind of cool. Yeah. They don't do anything like that because of the nanites. It's all gray and they always try to shy away from showing anything. Also, language wise, I think there was one shit. <laughs> there was one F. Was there? Yes, there was one. I'm pretty sure I heard okay, one. Okay, because I know PG-13 no allows one. one. But I like yeah. in a PG-13, you can pretty much say asshole shit like as much as you want. And I, I remember one. Yeah. And it's just, it was insulting. Where it's just like, oh, dang, Nabbit, come back here. Yeah, but that's Bloodshot. the thing. There's, a, there's one bit where the guy, like, he's about to kill a guy and the guy's like, I'm so screwed. And I was just like, <laughs> yeah. fuck this movie, man. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's like... It's the wrong hero to make a yeah, PG-13 movie Exactly. Like, I know they want to start a franchise because Marvel did it and now everyone's trying to do it. And, you know, Valiant's trying to be... Has trying to start a cinematic franchise for a long time now. And Bloodshot's one of their more popular characters. But, yeah, like, it's the wrong way to go about it. They shouldn't have done it in the first place. And the proof is in the pudding. Like, just the trailer alone didn't interest people who, who didn't know anything about the comic. And people who did know things about the comic were like, well, this is wrong, obviously. And it's like we talk about on almost every review we have where the movie doesn't live up. is like, if they're making a movie for everyone, it becomes for no one. Mm-hmm. It's not for people who don't know the comic. And it's not for people who do know the comic. It's just a generic, safe, 
bloodless, boring superhero knockoff. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. If people told you, yeah, if people told me that if I didn't know that it was from a comic, yeah. I could have just been like, well, it's sort of a rip off of these characters. Like, it doesn't know what it's doing. Yeah. It could have well, just been, it could have just been made for the screen. So that, to speak. that kind of ties into what uh, Callum brought up was when we were talking about it. Like, the dialogue in this movie is so cliche it's and so, so <laughs> clunky and bad. We were just laughing we were watching like, the movie, yeah. just at the dialogue, yeah. nothing else. Yeah, like the amount of times I went, oh god, you know, like yeah, like yeah, little yeah. like, oh no. It's it's like um, Sounds. what it what, what what happened when the movie ended? We were like, oh, that was so generic, so cliche. Like every every line of dialogue, and I was just like, this time it's personal. <laughs> like yeah. imagine that, like that kind of cheesy line for every line of dialogue. We, we <laughs> should have taken some notes. Did, did we take notes of the good lines? I didn't take any notes of the like the real cheese. Oh, yeah, I can't remember. Oh, I can't. It was just something. It was uh, just, it was, uh, uh, I remember. Um, I looked the man. Who, I looked the man who killed my wife in the eyes. And what is it? And he said, and then I killed him or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was like, I remember we were, like there was four of us sitting together and we we're just like lost our shit. Like, what the <laughs> fuck is this movie? <laughs> it was just, oh god. It's, so, but it's like we were saying. It's like it felt like an AI generated script. Like you just uh, fed in some I action always movie. Come home. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's just like I, I you, you. I told I, you I always come yeah. home. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, like it felt like they just put some action movie cliches and some yep. superhero movie cliches and then shat this out, you know, yeah. blood shat it out. <laughs> yeah, blood shat it out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But, uh, even the, some of the like location choices were weird. Well, see, this is because I, I read an article, they, f- they shot it in South Africa, which is not unusual for a lower budget movie because that I'm assuming leads tax breaks or it's mm. a lot cheaper or whatever. So actually, a lot of, like Mad Max Fury Road shot there because the desert and and uh, I know Dread shot there because it's cheaper. But this movie, but it, it, in this case, there's one scene in particular. One scene in particular. Now there's a scene that takes place in London. Um, Bloodshot has to go after a um, a former member of the company RST. Yeah, they they changed um, it in the in the comic book because it's PRS Project Rising Spirit. In the movie, it's Rising Spirit Rising Spirit Technologies. Spirit Technologies. Mm. RST, so, yeah. yeah. I so why. the uh, the big bad, I forget. That's, the, see, this is why I'm watching I, the movie. I'm like, why? I forget the big bad's name. Um, oh, everyone. <laughs> Does he have a name? Wait, that's another thing. An action movie is only as good as its villain, and this movie forgettable is forgettable. And like the villains keep like kind of changing, and I was just like, every character's oh, boring. Well, we should uh, while I'm while that's in my memory. Uh, the first villain you see is like a good Australian guy with his oh, Australian God. mob. That's group. just cultural yeah. cringe. Yeah, no, no I was like, I wasn't expecting it. I was like, yeah. oh no, what's going on? But <laughs> whole bunch of Australian look, bad the guys. The good use of Psycho Killer and that really, yeah, that was and fun. that kind of I dance. Did, but I did kind of like the dance. I, like it was che- see that was cheesy and cliche because I'd seen it a million times. That was fun. But <laughs> later, later in the movie, it's revealed why it's yeah. cheesy and cliche. But we won't yeah. spoil it now. Um, sorry, Nathan. Well, yeah. But yeah, there's one scene. So you know, Bloodshot's obviously going after. He's being manipulated. This yeah. Is not- that's the central focus of the movie. It's not too much of a spoiler. Yeah. Um, and he's going after a, a guy in England, uh, a former member of the team or whatever. Yeah. And it's supposed to be London. Yeah. And London, you know, is a very urban city-esque location. Yeah. Old. Tall, old, tall buildings. Yeah. And then it's an action scene in London now, and it looks like a shanty town. Yeah. All the low squat buildings, it, lots of yeah. like sort you, of we'll say could, ghetto alleys, you, you and could, like you could argue it looks like maybe like L.A. Like a it looks like of, it looks like, like some middle Southern California, yeah, like, yeah. But sort of like you cheap L.A. You can't get away with oh, wow. it looks like London. You, yeah. you yeah. can't get away with it looks like London because London is yeah tall buildings, yeah. old. Yeah. Not small buildings, poor. <laughs> yeah. Like it's in if it's in the city London, which that scene was, yeah. it's going to be rich. Yeah, and it's going to. It was be also old. really sunny. <laughs> it was really sunny. Like I know yeah. London gets sunny. Like I'm not yeah. saying you know, but, but it's it, just in terms of cinema. It gave cinema. us a California vibe. Yeah, we'll put it that way. <laughs> oh god, <laughs> and that was just weird. But, I'm leaning over the gems. I'm like, is it supposed to be London? <laughs> yeah, but like th- th- you actually brought something up when you called him Bloodshot. Like I think they say his name once. Ray. No, no, the, oh, the Bloodshot. The, because in the comic books, the whole thing is... That's his code name. His, his, his code name, Bloodshot, yeah. his, his past is a mystery. And it's only later where you reveal like who he actually was or whatever. But everyone just calls him Bloodshot. And there's a, there's a point in the, the comic books where it's like, I'm just Bloodshot now. Like, I'm not the man I used to be. But this movie, like, I think they say Bloodshot once or maybe twice. They're, again, 
we say this when a lot of comic book movies come out, they're afraid to embrace the comic bookiness and they're afraid to actually adapt yeah. the the character. Like, he's not Bloodshot, he's just Vin Diesel. Just like Birds of Prey. Yeah. Like I said, you make a movie for everyone, you make a movie for no one. And I know this is a lesser known character, but that's just more the reason to em- yeah, embrace well, what makes him different. Exactly. And he's interesting. A, he's a lesser known character, so you double down on... Yeah. Especially if you, if you want it to be an action movie. Yeah, because like... Double down. It's like you said, if you're not familiar with the comic book, it, you could make the mistake that this is a, just, just a rip, generic rip rip-off the screen, yeah. of, of Marvel movies. It's just a generic yeah. Deadpool-Wolverine hybrid. Like, yeah. like, you know, you got your Wolverine and Deadpool obviously come from the same program manipulated by the government. It's yeah. similar enough. Yeah. It's similar and enough that if I didn't know it was from a comic book, I could be like, yeah. oh, yeah, he's a weapon fucking... Yeah. 14 over here. And like, at the end of the what's movie... What's the difference? At the end of the movie when it goes full CGI nonsense and there's a guy with like an exoskeleton thing and I was just like, what is this Ant-Man like bullshit? You know what I mean? Mm. Like this could be any crappy superhero movie. Like if there's nothing that sets it apart, which is goes kind of rewinds it back to when I was a kid going like they need to make a really cool grounded like matrix you know kung fu and guy gets shot and blood but then he re you know wolverine reheals himself like they need to yeah like play with that but instead they 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 ignore all that that stuff goes back to what we were saying the other week we need we need more smaller budget focused films yeah like this movie wasn't huge budget but but it could be more focused yes the thing yeah exactly they folk they they spread the budget over too much crap when they should have focused it on. Well, we don't need all CGI crap because he's a super soldier. Why not? This movie should have had more in common with Universal Soldier Regeneration that I was talking about a couple of weeks ago. Then you know have have ties to uh, similarities mm. to like Marvel movies. You didn't need all that CGI bullshit in it because yeah. you know he you can get away with him just being like a Punisher style. Yeah, you, know, you can have like one scene where he shows off his powers, but no, no, like keep that aspect, yeah. but don't have like crazy, you know, exoskeleton, yeah. crazy. Or if you are, take it from the comic books, which and there are characters like that in the comic books. Also, this ties into another problem, which I believe that did so- I think Sony made this movie. I can't remember. Whoever made this movie, they own the rights to Bloodshot, but not to all the other Valiant characters. <laughs> So, the age old problem. Yeah. So we're back to like the old Spider Man problem, and, <laughs> you know, where it's like they try, they're trying so hard not to bring in characters that kind of need to be there. Like, you know, um, I mean, but the, I mean, this I could go on for ages about the comic books, but, you know, like there are the Harbinger, like I said, the X Men things, and they're obviously trying not to reference that at all because they're probably not allowed. And then there's like the hardcore, which are like this, um, like special forces team, which they're probably not allowed to reference either. But Bloodshot and Hardcore were very tied together in the new comic books. Mm. But and so, but he has his own team in this movie, which don't exist in the comic books, at least not in the same way. And I think they were trying to do like a low rent version of Hardcore because, but they weren't yeah. allowed to. Yeah. So you just get generic characters like Hot Lady. Well, because who- they're all based on like fixing wounded soldiers in the movie, right? Yeah, in a but, certain way. So but they end up, yeah, they end up being very generic. But that's what I'm saying is like you can make original characters, but make them interesting. Because in the movie, you got like Hot Lady who has like breathed through her chest yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she, yeah. she can't ingest, she can't yeah. ingest uh, poisons or something, yeah. uh, airborne poisons. There's uh, a douchebag with uh, robotic legs. Um, and, then you and, got there's blind, and there's blind, and there's blind guy who yeah. sees through cameras on his shoulder. And then you got Doctor Octopus. It's been a, they spent a no, whole no, half that was um, douchebag yeah, with legs. He puts on that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I'm like, and they spent a whole half an hour working out these villains. Yeah, and I was just like, but I'm like, why would you make a team of like super soldiers so boring <laughs> yeah. and not and have powers that they can't even demonstrate? You can do anything. Like why? Why not? Why didn't the blind guy have? Like, just ocular implants where he can just see through walls and shit. That would have been cool. That would have been much cooler. You know, or why didn't the the guy with the robot legs have yeah, robot arms and legs and he can, like, jump uh, jump around and stuff, which that, I know he kind of does at the end. But. That's, a, that's a cool point because, like, the whole sort of goal of RST is advancing technology for uh, eventual use in weaponry and yeah. army and stuff like that. So... Why didn't they just, yeah, like, gave him all this technology as a vest? Yeah. Why don't just replace his eyes? Yeah. 
That's much more efficient. Like yeah, in terms it's a bit weird. Yeah. It's dumb. Like the people who made like who made the movie like just came up with the worst ideas. Like you could do anything. Literally anything. You could have... Oh, like, the breathing thing alone is kind of lame. Yeah, I was just like... Do something more exciting. Power? And I was like, oh, she's a Navy diver. Like, maybe there's an action scene, like, in... Um, is it... Is it... Which which is the Mission Impossible... Is it Mission Impossible 5 where he dives in the thing? Oh, yeah, I think so. Rogue yeah. Nation. Yeah. 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 And I was like, maybe they're going to do something like that. Nah. Like, you know, like, it's just... It doesn't have to be... Like, it doesn't have to be... The power doesn't have to be visible. Just make it interesting. Yeah. Or like, they, they tried so hard on making all the sort of... Yeah. Stuff too technically visible and like... Yeah, if you're going to introduce a character with that power, like, it's like a Chekhov's gun thing. You're going to have to bring it back later. And I know they kind of do, but not really. And not in yeah. any interesting way. And it's yeah. all CGI nonsense. The yeah. CGI at the end of this movie is so bad. I was like cringing and the kind of nervous laughing because <laughs> of how bad it was. Like, what did I... I leaned over to you and I said, 2020, 2005, who knows? <laughs> yeah. You know? Pick, pick one and you're right. Yeah. It's yeah. like the CGI it looks <laughs> like it could be from either because apparently <laughs> yeah. we haven't gotten that far. Or as we discussed last week, we have, but people... The people, people who just make don't it... Care, just, yeah. People don't care. And the, the people actually doing the work... Don't get paid ha- enough. Yeah. yeah. Have, they don't have, get paid at all. ...have so. such harsh conditions that they end up with PS3 like graphics. Yeah. It's just like ridiculous. Um, but anyway, we'll, we'll go into spoilers because we kind of talk, talked enough about um, without spoiling anything. But yeah, like I knew I wasn't going to like it, but... I didn't think it'd be this bad. Yeah. I'll be I thought it'd be you, serviceable. Yeah. I wouldn't have even seen this if we weren't going to talk about it for the show. True. Like, like honestly, if I'd never read the comic books and we didn't have the show, like I probably wouldn't bother because it looks like a generic uh, Vin Diesel action movie. It is a generic Vin Diesel action movie. Yeah. Um, I would have watched it on Netflix, but... Yeah, That's even like, Vin Diesel is like I love Vin Diesel, but like he's getting to a point now where he's getting a bit, he's getting a bit old, he's getting yeah. a bit pudgy. Like he he's he's not the right casting choice again. Yeah. The decision goes back to the wrong decision. He's not the right casting choice. Yeah, I was joking with my friend. Like he's getting a bit pudgy. Like look, get, he's getting a bit of that dad bod. Like he's still kind of you know beefy, but he's getting a bit it's of a that dad sort bod. of muscle where it's also a little bit of fat in there. Yeah. So it's like he's, get, he's, he's ripped and he, he's not ripped anymore, but he's big. Yeah, and some of it's muscle, but some he's of it's also flab. his face is kind of sagging. Like yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah. not as you know. Um, and we're saying he's got the dad bod. Like we call him, we should call him dad shot. You know, <laughs> and instead of the red circle on his chest, he's just like he's dropped past the sauce on on his chest. He's got the <laughs> yeah. red circle. That's the other thing, like the red circle, right? So in the comic books, his whole thing he's got a big red circle on his chest, like that's his like it's a target. emblem. Yeah, but it's like he didn't paint it on or whatever. Like it's part of the side effect or whatever of the Rising Spirit project. And then his eyes glow blood red, hence obviously. the name Bloodshot. And yeah, and he's got white, like pale white skin. So, I mean, I know it's hard to adapt a comic book where the hero kind of looks almost like a vampire or something, you know, mm. blood red eyes. But there are, you know, in the old, in the 90s comics especially, and, you know, some in, in the later comics they do it as well, where, like, he can look normal, but then when he goes into, like, action mode, yeah. his, his skin as goes they- white and his, his, his eyes go blood yeah. red. Like, they sort and of try it when he overclocks in this they movie. They only do that at the very end, yeah. but not really. But they not they really, shy yeah. away from it. And I didn't like the overclock bullshit. I'm like, that should just be a, yeah. a thing of, like... they, they we'll, get, we'll, oh, we'll, go, oh. we'll go into spoilers now, but... Um, yeah. Well, I mean, the nano... Like, the nanobots... Um, so, is it nanobots in the comics? Yeah, be- before we go, should we announce spoilers? Yeah, and explain to us how the powers okay. work in the comics. So, I'm going gonna, gonna, to... Oh, before or after spoilers? Before maybe either or okay in the, in the comic books he gets yeah he gets his blood replaced by nanites it's always been nanites but his powers are you know like enhanced strength speed yeah and you know agility Re- regenerative powers regenerative powers also he can like talk to tech not talk to technology but you know he can hack Interf- into computers interface. yeah he can hack into com- which they don't do in the movie which but, was disappointing yeah. So it looks up databases. Yeah, so that's yeah. one thing that annoyed me is with that Vin Diesel's character knowing how to actually do any of this stuff himself, yeah. his nanites do like hack satellites and stuff. Yeah. And like it's not explained. So that's fine if you want to explain how that's actually possible where he might give commands to the nanites and they independently yeah. act and uh, so send him information. That's another good but point. I feel like it's bullshit. This movie has like so much exposition 
And yet I was just like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, a lot of fake hacker crap. (laughs) But like, and, and yet I was still like, this is so, this movie's just boring. Yeah. It's like the worst crime at all. Yeah. The best action scene in the movie is the one where it's all like red, you know, glowing red and it's boring as fuck. Like they do, (laughs) they do this 300 slow motion thing. Yeah. 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 And I was just like, oh, I'm so bored right now. And I like, we've said it before. There's no worse crime for a movie to have than just be boring. Yeah. We, we'd rather talk about a really bad movie say what you than want a about, boring look, movie. Say yeah. what you want about The Last Jedi. I can't say I was bored while I was watching The Last Jedi. Oh, I disagree. <laughs> no, I was engaged, but I was furious. But, yeah. Like, I was paying attention I was because I was upset. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, at I least- was a, there was a lot of feelings. None of them was bored. Yeah, I, was yeah. face, fa- I was watching the movie through a face palm. <laughs> no, but... um. Yeah. Uh, oh, one more thing, and then we'll go into spoilers because we're getting too close. But I got a headache watching this movie because it's just shaky cam bullshit. Oh yeah, there was a lot of shaky cam. Like, what the fuck? Come on. Yeah. Vin Diesel was just sitting there in the corner, and the camera was going this is like it was in a paint shaker. Like, come on, ridiculous. Yeah. But yeah, yeah I mean, I knew I was going to be disappointed, but like, come on, it's like a birds of prey situation. Whereas, like, I had low expectations, and still the movie disappointed me. And, you know, they, they they get the rights to, to these characters and they screw them up and they don't take advantage of the things they, they own. Um, yeah. And they spend all the money, even though it's lower budget, quote unquote, they spend all the money and time on it. They get a big name star and then they just kind of fart something out and it's just like, well, what was the point of that? And they try to CGI it to death when it's like they're already working on limited time and budget. Like we, yeah, like we said, they need, need to focus. Yeah, God. For, also, God forbid. Like I understand you have to have some CGI because yeah. of the nature of the work. Yeah, but God forbid, it be mostly practical. But like, it's, yeah, it's like we talked about the other week. All movies, doesn't matter how fantastical, should try to do as much practical yeah. as possible. And then when they really hit that point of we yeah. can't go any further with practical, then you CGI. Yeah, exactly. Like. Instead of having CGI stuff, why not do wire work? And I know they did yeah. wire work, but you know what I mean? Like, why no, not yeah. like more big jumps Yeah. instead of like, exactly. you know, what we got, which yeah, was like lots of- Yeah, flubbery PS3 characters. Yeah, really characters. obvious CGI. Yeah, it was just embarrassing. Um, yeah, so full spoilers for the new Bloodshot movie. It's not really worth seeing, but if you you know if you haven't seen it, we are going to talk spoilers. It might be the only pic- and- it might be the only movie in theaters. Soon. Oh yeah, that's another thing. That's another thing. We, we're not sure how long if we can keep this. See it. We're not sure how long we can keep the show going if there's no new movies out. Well, God, think the classic some- month is yeah, coming soon. Everybody, classic, yeah. there are some movies um, which, of course, you cannot access in Australia, but we yeah. will find a way legally to bring it to you for with our reviews. That are some Universal movies that we have not yet seen yeah. are coming to video on demand in America. Yeah, instead uh, of uh, instead of uh, to cinemas in America. So yeah. we will personally fly to America to review these movies. For you. <laughs> yeah, we'll get back to you. Uh, so <laughs> they, uh, hey, flights are really hey, cheap. Yeah, now. But, uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, like movies like <laughs> The Hunt, which we talked about on the show a couple yeah. of weeks ago, uh, we might actually get to bring a review to you, to you closer than we anticipated. Yeah, I mean, we'll see how we go. We, I mean, I mean, we do have a schedule lined yeah. up, but yeah. All, but yeah, also like. Keep an eye on the Facebook and the Instagram, and yeah. that's like if there's any um, things can change. Yeah, if we, yeah. if we have to, uh, what do you take a week off because of this craziness? We might have to, but so far things look all right. We'll see, see how it goes. But yeah, full spoilers, Bloodshot. One of you gets sick. I'm surprised. <laughs> Ca- I'm actually surprised Callum hasn't gotten sick. Oh, yet. like I said, man, I'm just tired. Okay, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like I ache, I have a fever, I got a sore throat. I'm like, I'm just tired. <laughs> it's like, <"Hey>, Callum, <laughs> hey, uh, you know, you, you just uh, we'll get there. I'll you know, get there. Don't worry. You know what my secret is? <laughs> I'm always sick. <laughs> I'm not- <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, full spoilers for the Bloodshot movie, and also mo- very mild spoilers for the comic book, um, both the original and the reboot. So. I guess we were talking about the Callum asked me about the powers. So in the comic book, yeah, he's he yeah gets the nanites, goes like all white, it's the blood, sh- the red eyes, and the big red circle. And he's got like a cool nineties black hair, like crew cut with like a lightning bolt, like shaved into the side, <laughs> cause ninety was yeah, ninety, yeah. dude. Okay, so fucking. I think I've talked about this before. Nineties <laughs> comic books look ridiculous, but it's like my favorite. Does he have the big bulky yeah, like build? Every, yeah, every everyone's like super Roided roided out. out and all the women are super skinny <laughs> and everyone has really big hair, doesn't matter man or fe- male or female. 
Like everyone's got a mullet. Superman had a mullet. It was glorious. <laughs> I love that era of comic books. So the Valiant 90s shit, well, that's my jam. That's why I, I loved it so much. Like Eternal Warrior just has this fucking mullet. Like it's cool. <laughs> Um, <laughs> then of course you get the new comic books and it looks new and the art is just kind of whatever um, but I like the 90s ones looked so cool they had an aesthetic yeah um, and also like he's got like a uh, you know he's got like you know army green cargo pants and combat boots he's got like a katana on his back <laughs> like it's just cool 90s like radical like cool dude yeah like yeah. you know awesome stuff um, yeah and, and yeah he can talk to technology which is it comes up a bit in the comic book where he'll like hack into a computer just by like touching the side of it or something which is cool cool simple idea back in the 90s was quite high tech now is even simpler i mean with cell phones and stuff like it's even more you know like common but they don't really play with that and there's one bit where his nanites access the internet and he's driving shit. a car and he's like yeah and it's that's never explored either so like he just does it. Yeah. There's no there's but, no scene of him playing with yeah. his powers in that sense. Yeah, that's an, that's actually a good point. Is there's there's not a lot of scenes, if any. I, I don't. There, oh, there's only one scene. There's one scene where he like where punches he's, something. He's punching. He punches the, a what possibly the was load a load bearing, bearing pillar, and we're like, don't punch that bin. And he's like punching <laughs> yeah. the load bearing concrete pillar <laughs> um, <laughs> to test his strength. Other than that, there's no scenes where he's like, you know, what are my abilities? Um, and then, yeah, but, so we don't, yeah, we don't, yeah. As like far as the, the audience is books, concerned, he doesn't know that he has that power. Yeah. And then there's a scene he has, and he's like, yeah. hey, Nernites, can you look this up for me? Thanks, bros. But like, I wasn't, I didn't have really have a problem with that because in the comic books, his, <laughs> yeah, nan, yeah, his but, nanites are his power. So he, if he has to access something, it's like, I'm checking the database. But do, yeah, do, do, as do, someone do. who doesn't know the comics, yeah. that was so out but, of. Yeah, it comes out of nowhere. And all the um, Project Rising or Rising Spirit technology people are all acting so surprised. Like, how is he doing it? But then we find out later that they actually all know his powers and I've just playing look that was a slightly a good twist in an otherwise yeah, really shitty movie but, but again that that twist comes from the comic books but is executed really poorly <laughs> yeah so i guess we should talk about that where in the movie uh, so at the start he gets his wife gets killed by this guy named axe and then axe shoots him in the head and he dies and then he wakes up and he's at rst and they're like we brought you back from the dead we we uh, acquire corpses, uh, you know, corpses from the U.S. military who have no, have not been claimed uh, by any family, and we've injected you with nanites, and we brought you back from the dead. And he can't remember who he is or where he's from. And then he he has a nightmare of his wife being killed, and he remembers the guy who did it. And then his nanites automatically run through the the database and find the guy. And then he goes and he kills the guy and the rising RST people are like, you know, talking him through it. And then they're like, oh, so surprised when he runs off. Um, and then after he kills the guy, he comes back and then they, they put him in his like bed chamber thing, whatever you call it. You know what I'm talking about? Mm. And then um, and then they're like, it's a twist. You're our programmed killing machine. And, you know, every time you wake up, you have a new revenge story. Of like you have amnesia, someone else but someone, his yeah, wife. and then you have a dream, and then we talk you through the technology, and then you run off and kill him, and then you come back. In the comic books, it's much more, it's simpler and less stupid. Yeah, because the movie implies that every time he wakes up, he has amnesia, so they have to talk him through the technology, even though they know it's a trick. Yeah, like they're in on it. Then they have to act surprised that he's running away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then they have to act surprised that he's using his powers. Then that when he comes back, they have to uh, reboot him and re process re reinstall his. Yeah, but in the comic books, it's it's much more interesting. Where it's like he's just on a mission, and he'll be like, and the guy in his earpiece will be like, "Ah, oh, you know this terrorist. He's the guy who killed your whole platoon. You know, they go get him." And so he kills, and then he comes back, and then they just put him back in his chamber and they erase his memory and then put a new memory in. And then, you know, the new memory is like, ah, oh, this, this, uh, this terrorist guy, he killed your family, go get him, you know? And it becomes this like moment, memento kind of like, he doesn't know. And when he, when eventually when he gets out of Project Rising Spirit and gets freed 
and then he's like he doesn't know who he is mm. yeah and he has multiple identities and multiple me- memories because that's something they don't play with in this yeah is that the fact that if you sort of because obviously most of his body and maybe some of his mind is now powered by technology because you know like there's blood in the like yeah the brain all, and all that kind yeah, of stuff it's, it's all, like yeah. it's all a bit more intertwined um the like there's something they don't play with like the sort of layers of memories yeah. Sort of maybe Cause, collapsing. Yeah, because that's the thing is in the movie, he has one memory of a guy killing his wife. Then they just change the guy according to who they want to kill. But the, all the people they want him to kill are just ex-RST members that Guy Pierce's character who runs RST wants dead because they left the company and are trying yeah. to work against Bury it. the secrets yeah. and such, yeah. But in, in the comic book, again, it's more interesting. It's like they're a contractor or like they, they send him after just random targets like there's not a there's not just oh it's just that scientist guy that we have to trick you into killing it's just like you need a target you know you need a suicide mission target taken out but you know there's no way you can do it mm. um there's send, gonna there's yeah. gonna be a casualties if you do send it send bloodshot so send bloodshot so and you they do they they realize uh, you know comic comic books go a lot longer than movies yeah yeah but you can do this in a movie um they kind of explained that originally he was just a mindless killing machine, but that was like too insane. He would just kill women, children, burn whole villages. Like there's this whole thing in Vietnam, like it's pretty cool. Then they kind of realized, well, he needs a bit of a conscience or like a moral compass. So there's less collateral damage, less, less chance of being mm. fanned out. So they give him like the revenge story thing. So he's not after anyone. He's after people for yeah. a specific reason. Yeah, and he has he has memories of a family, and he has a name, which is much more interesting. And there's a reason for that. Um, and it's also interesting because it's like one revenge mission. He's like he'll have wife, a wife, and two twin boys, and the next rev- and his name will be John Smith or whatever. I can't remember. Um, and then the next mission, he'll have a wife and a daughter. And next it revenge changes, mission, yeah. and it changes depending on like what they need him to do, and he'll have different names. And that's it. That's something that I wish they would have played yeah. on in this movie. And I, in the comic book, Ray Garrison is just a name he it's pick, a, picks out yeah. of one of his memories. It's like it was never him. And uh, where that point I'm up to in the comic books, it's like he hasn't even revealed his real identity mm. yet. And then th- there's a point where he's like, I don't want to know. I'm bloodshot now. And yeah, he embraces that side. They should have done that in the movie. You know, there's a bit where he finds his wife and finds out she was never his wife. I would have... I, I leaned over to James and I said, it would have been so much funnier if she turned around and says, what do you mean, Ray? I'm your sister. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> That's just... Because it never ha- it never really happened, right? It's all in his brain. Yeah. But then they then they just would have made her his, his sister in the simulation. But it would have been funnier. Yeah. Oh, God. At least then it would have been like a so bad it's good movie. <laughs> yeah. You would have just been like, what? <laughs> no, we have Vin Diesel fantasizes about <laughs> incest by accident. But, you, you know, like the, when the bit when he goes to his wife and she was like, never his wife, it's like there should have been more moments like that where he's like, I don't know who I am. I've got so many different pasts. Everyone's lying to me. I'm just a mindless killer. I'm going to embrace the bloodshot name and become mm. bloodshot, but I'm going to become a hero bloodshot, which is kind of what happens in the comic books. But I, they don't I would do like that. I would have liked to see more of your sort of yeah. like memory and collapse sort yeah. of to use a better bad term. Yeah. I guess. Especially, I mean, you got fucking guy Pierce there. He was in Memento. <laughs> like, come on, it's alright. But it's <laughs> like the connection there. But like, it's like we said. Like, they're afraid to adapt the comic books accurately, or they're afraid to because they don't want to alienate people. You know. Yeah. But then they get rid of all the interesting stuff. Just like the healing alone is so boring in this movie and is so CGI nonsense. Like they spent all this CGI on the nanites flying out of his body and then flying back in. And I was just like... They spent half the CGI budget probably on... It would have been... For some reason editing his famous back tattoo out of the movie. Oh, that was one shot though. One shot. And they, 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 could, have, they could have used makeup. They could, they could have used makeup. Although it was probably digital. No, probably digital. Yeah. But why? Yeah. But like even the 90s comics are even simpler. And, you know, I, like I said, I love the ni- the simplicity of the 90s comic books. It's like he was just like a mafia gangster. He was a terrible guy. He gets killed, turns into bloodshot, forgets who he is, eventually finds out who he was. But sort he's of a, like, a little message about you are not your past yeah, sort exactly, of being thrown exactly. in. Yeah. 100%. He's like, well, I was that guy. Now I'm not. Yeah. And he changes his name from what his original name was to a new name. And he becomes that guy. And he's like, and bloodshot's his 
superior alter ego. Because like kind any of thing. any of us could be probably a terrible person. It's circumstance plus opportunity plus nurture. Yeah. He's like I've given I've been given a second chance, even though I was uh, my second chance was being turned into a killing machine. He's like I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to help use my powers to help people. Um, like it's much more interesting that way. Yeah, that whole nature versus nurture argument of is like are people born bad. Yeah, it's like. They don't play with that. That could have been a great moment in the movie where he's like, you wanted me to be a killing machine. Like, screw you. I'm leaving. And they're like, oh, whatever. We got, there's a bomb in your neck or, you know, we've got your wife or, you know, what? I know it's cliche, but at least it adds stakes. Mm. And at least, you know, he has an arc of like becoming bloodshot. Whereas in the movie, he's just like, he's still Ray. <laughs> yeah. They, everyone just calls him Ray. He's like, he's just a soldier who got some powers now. Like, it's just boring, generic, safe, you know, like, there's no... And that's another thing, stakes. You know, we talked about the villains. It's like, because the the a villain who killed his wife was never real. It was just, they used the face of the guy they needed him to kill to yeah. in the revenge, yeah, yeah, fake yeah. memory. So, then, I guess the real bad guy is Guy Pierce's character, who's the one implanting the memories... But he's just—he's like a—he's like a shirt. Like he's just a, a business man, guy, evil businessman. Yeah, and, and but then you got um, douchebag with robotic legs, who's on his team, but he's just kind of jealous and annoyed at him for some reason. Yeah, uh, and so Guy Pierce sends douchebag with robot legs and blind guy after him, and I guess they're the bad guys, but they're not like the real bad guy. So there's no good arch nemesis. There's no real, or, yeah, there's no good villain. Yeah. Like they, when, when, when what's his face uh, at the start of the movie, he's like, I'm, he's, my, my name's Axe. In the comic books, there is a villain named Axe and he's one of Bloodshot's enemies. But he's like a tech genius who creates like a robot armor and, he, and that way he can fight Bloodshot, you know, because mm. Bloodshot's obviously super strong and can heal. So how do you go up against that with technology? I was like, oh, maybe they're going to do that. No, nah, they just use the name Axe. Yeah. Because someone probably saw it. Easter egg for the fans. Yeah, so exactly. But it's like they didn't take advantage of it. And they made him a weird Aussie guy who's not, it's not actually the bad guy. Yeah. And Bloodshot kills him in cold blood. Yeah. Good, good, kills. Uh, good cliche use of psycho killer. Yeah. <laughs> Which we'll but, get to. Yeah, well, the, that's the thing. is like, that's what I said. The, the scene was so cliche because the killer is dancing to Psycho Killer. And which they also reference in it's the like movie. It's like a, a like Reservoir you, Dogs the, the kind guy, of thing. The guy Pierce's villain character is like, you know, we've used to all the, the cliches. Yeah, to the programmer yeah. guy. He's like, yeah. you've, you've used all the um, movie cliches in the fake memories. He's like, <laughs> yeah. enough of you. <laughs> but that's why I think, like, every I, again, they're, they're probably just doing it for cost-effective reasons. Yeah. Or like, every, every memory is the same. They just edit just, a few things. Like, the the memories should have been um, different each time and, like, you should have, you know, had... Yeah, just, just because you have to, like... Yeah. Doesn't... Having different memories each time doesn't mean it has to blow out the budget. Yeah. Exactly. Like, and it, the memories are all going to be shot in, like, houses and gardens yeah. and normal places. Yeah. It's not like the lot of, the memories are going to be, you know, Yeah, you don't Star have to have Wars. an action... Yeah. yeah. It doesn't have to be an action <laughs> set piece. Yeah. It's just like, oh, I, I remember my kids and playing in the backyard... So you shoot some kids in the backyard, like it <laughs> yeah. takes five seconds, five <laughs> bucks. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, like they should have played with that more. They should, and he's just his powers. Like they don't, his powers aren't interesting. Oh, also at the start of the movie, before he gets his powers, the guys come to attack him. Oh no, but that's a fake memory, isn't it? Oh, never mind. He's just really strong. <laughs> yeah. Remember when he takes those guys down in the bathroom? Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, like yeah. super strong, and I was like, "But this is before, but that's a fake memory." So I guess that <laughs> yeah. kind of yeah, yeah, makes yeah. sense. Um, but yeah, they, they don't play with his powers, and because they can't show gore, like they can't show him regrowing limbs or regrowing the, hair. The one, <laughs> yeah, the one bit where he does get shot in the face, and he kind of you see, you know, muscle or whatever with filter has that, that red, red filter, filter. So and the nanites kind of blow out, and then they zoom back in. Whereas in the comic books, like I said, like it's like flesh and blood. Like, if he gets shot, like, it's a big gaping wound. wound, And then that and then heals. And then work to heal it. Yeah. It's not like they go back to his yeah. body. Also, it, take, it takes time in the comic books, which, again, I know comic books are much different and a different medium. And the way they work in this movie as well, they disable him at one point by using an EMP. 
Yeah. I don't know how it works in the comics, but wouldn't that technically stop his heart because his heart wouldn't well, be beating and he'd have a heart attack and die? Yeah, I can't I can't remember in the comic. I'm sure they do that once in the comic books, but yeah, that I mean it's, like, it's just comic book logic at that point. Yeah, but like cuz his whole his, if his whole circulatory system is nanites and they all shut down, then no blood's pumping. Yeah, like they probably wouldn't be able to revive revi- I don't know. Yeah, but, yeah. but yeah, like, I don't, yeah, I don't know enough about <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, they don't they don't take advantage of that stuff, like the cool stuff in the comic books and the villains. You were saying it takes time. Yeah, like you know, I mean, but even Wolverine in the comic books takes longer to heal than he does. That's true. Yeah, that's true. And that comes with the PG thirteen, but also just the the nature of like an action movie. So if you get shot, you have to heal and then move on. Like they can't. Yeah, that would have been cooler though. Like that might have made the movie. It raises stakes. Raises stakes. And yeah, he regenerates, but it does take a long time. And that'll set him apart from the cinematic version of Wolverine and from the cinematic version of Deadpool where they just kind of heal. Oh, Deadpool yeah. takes a little... The CG oh, would have been more... Yeah, the Deadpool, the, for, yeah. yeah for, sim- for catastrophic damage, but, Deadpool does take a yeah. little while. And the, the, the yeah, the little baby, the, the, the baby ends. But, <laughs> that's, but that's also played for comedic effect. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, like, yeah, he... But even if they don't do whole limbs, like if he gets shot, like there should be a thing where they, there's only amount of, a certain amount of bullets he can take before his system has to shut down well, and, they show, and heal. They show a, ma- a mouse or a rat, um, like, yeah, struggling to fight cancer. against a tumor. Um, yeah. But they could have used something like that, where it's like, you need to take a certain amount of damage before the nanites struggle. Yeah. Like, you have to come back to the lab if you well, want. Well, that's the thing. In the in the original comic books, the 90s ones, it's more simple. It's like, he gets shot, there's a bullet hole, and, it, like, it takes a while to heal. Um, I don't think you ever see him regrow entire limbs in the original comic books. But he basically just has to re- recharge just by resting or eating or, you know, yeah. sleeping. Um, and it doesn't take so long that it becomes debilitating. Mm. But in the new comic books, it adds a sort of almost horror element where, like, if he does lose a limb or if he does get shot to shit, he's like, yeah, there's so many scenes in the comic books where he's just like a husk of a corpse, but he's still, like, talking and, yeah, and yeah. but he can't move. Um, and, and then eventually like he'll regenerate, but he needs protein to regenerate. So there's a couple of bits in the comic books where he like, I don't think, I don't know if he's ever eaten people. I can't remember now, but I know there's a couple of bits where he's just like, he, there was one bit where he goes to a slaughterhouse and there's like a, a bunch of cows and he's just like, hello ladies. And he's just like, <laughs> it cuts to the next scene and he's got blood dripping from his mouth. <laughs> like that's a... That's a more extreme movie, yeah. but that's more interesting. <laughs> yeah. Like, imagine, like, a superhero movie where he's, I guess, kind of like a... not va- He's not a vampire. He's like a techno vampire kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, you don't need all that stuff. Like, the, the 90s comic book version is fine. Like, he's the nanites just regenerate mm. themselves. But also, there is the bits in the comic books where, yeah, he needs, he needs like, a... I think it's called a nutrient bath, where when he goes back to Rising Spirit... They like put him in this, soak him in this uh, nanite regenerating liquid, liquid, which they should have done that as well. That would have been cool visual image too. This, this big tank. And this is just like a tube of like nanites. They just, just, they just yeah, inject they just him stick with. It, yeah, it's, it's it looks like the uh, liquid um, adamantium from X Men Two. You know, it's just like yeah. grey goo, yeah, and yeah. they like stick it in him, and and he just lying. He's just lying on a bed and. Like it's just boring. The whole everything, all the choices are boring. Action scenes are boring and. Shaky cam bullshit CGI nonsense. It's just a shame. Yeah. Like they had it's so much potential, so much wasted. <sighs> the, but they, yeah, it seems to be uh, quite a common thread now, doesn't it, with comic book movies that yeah. aren't Marvel, I should say. And movies are precious just, right now. Yeah, well <laughs> <laughs> Stop being bad. <laughs> what did I say to you while watching this movie? I was like, I wish I had coronavirus, then I wouldn't have to watch this movie. <laughs> like, <laughs> come on, like we we only got a few movies coming out of the cinema, like make them good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, we're entering a dry period. Yeah. I don't want to be sitting here watching this watching, crap. I don't want to waste my time. I've only got we've only got a short amount of time before we either get sick or die. <laughs> <laughs> I want to watch good movies. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's just such a waste. Because and if see if we get quarantined, you can't even come over to our house and watch the movie on the projector. Yeah. Uh if he gets sick and we're all sick together, I mean, nah. You if can't we're leave all the house. sick, I don't think you can. You leave the house. 
I mean, you shouldn't. We should. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We honestly, we shouldn't. We're even, not advocating. Yeah, honestly, yeah, breaking no, no, no. self quarantine. Yeah, honestly. On, honestly, we shouldn't even gone to to see this movie. Like, yeah. But yeah. I mean, none of us are showing symptoms. But then again, it takes a while to show symptoms. Give it time. But give it time. <laughs> I'm working it up. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. Hey, hey, according to work, all right. I've been sick for weeks. <laughs> but yeah, like. I wish they see, and this is another thing. Is like obviously they were trying to start a franchise, which we always yeah. talk about. They shouldn't try to start a franchise. They should just make one good movie. But then, if you are gonna have more than one movie in mind, you should plan that out at least loosely. And this movie is obviously trying to be like our MCU thing, trying to get something going. But you know, it's not. It was never going to do well, and it's not doing well in these circumstances. So it's probably not going to get a sequel. Which I think is a good thing because in a few years they can probably just reboot it. But yeah. also, like whoever owns the rights to the other Valiant characters, they should. Yeah, they MCU worked so far. No other cinematic superhero cinematic universe has worked. No, but that's that's because they don't have. We've said this before. That's because they don't have someone like yeah, Kevin Feige, yeah. and also they're rushing. Like they yeah. they didn't. They're not the doing MCU the got to work. where they are by really taking it quite slow. Yeah. In terms relatively, terms, relatively. Yeah. So, like, uh, like I really want to see the other Valiant comic books adapted to the big screen, but not like this. Yeah, you know, like they gotta, they gotta put the effort in, and it's like we were talking about with DC. Like, if they want to be a cinematic, you know, they want to make movies, that's fine. They need to set themselves apart, and we kept saying, or at least I kept saying, they need to do that by doing standalone movies, yeah, having self him. self-contained timelines and canons. And, you know, doing R and more R rated stuff. So Valiant could have easily been a great R rated universe. Oh yeah. You know? And they're small enough that it would work. Yeah, yeah they they might not be and as big yeah, as Marvel as DC. You don't have but they to, had carve out their own niche. Yeah, you don't have to spend a billion dollars on a Valiant on a bloodshot movie because of the nature of the character. You know, you can make it smaller, you know, you can yeah. focus more on the stunts and the action. And That's yeah, this is some CGI and stuff and, the, you know, but a lot of special You know effects, what? But if there was lots more violence and swearing, we could overlook it to a certain extent. Well, I mean, Birds of Prey had violence and swearing and that was yeah, kind but of not sanitized. Really, but not really. Yeah, that was kind of sanitized as well. <laughs> that, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, it, that doesn't automatically make it a good no, movie. No, but... It's it, a step in the right it's direction. It's a step in the right direction. Like, obviously, there were more problems than that with this movie. Yeah. I.e. the dialogue. Oh, God. That was some of the worst dialogue we've ever seen in a movie oh, in recent memory. Yeah. I mean, we kind of already mentioned this, you know, in terms of the dialogue and the characters. But it's like, other than Bloodshot, I don't remember anyone's name. KT. KT, yeah. His, that's it, his that's wife it. was Gina. That's all I got. And Guy, <laughs> Guy Pierce was Dr. Harting or Dr. Harting. Know, Howell? Yeah. No. Other than yeah. that, like all the all the the main team members, I don't remember the names. It's not important. Yeah, was that the hacker guy, Wil- Wil- Wiley Wil- or Wil- Wiggins? Wiggins? Wiggins, yeah, Wil- 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 Wilton Wil- Wiggins or something, something like that. Yeah, I don't know, who cares? He's not. From, I don't think he's from the comic books. See, like <laughs> we we talk about this, uh, we repeat ourselves, but Hollywood keeps doing it. Like they listen to our show and take notes about what to do to piss us off. <laughs> yeah, and it's working. They take they take the comic book. They pretty much ignore all the cool shit and then they replace it with boring generic shit. And it's like yeah. you ha- you already have you already have the rights to the characters, the technologies used, Just you know, the weaponry, it. the locations. Just use it. Or yeah, you can remix it. it doesn't have to be one to one, you know? Yeah, that's right. But it's like but the comics are popular or whatever for a reason. Yeah. You don't have to stray that far from the formula. Yeah, like when I was a kid thinking of like how to do a bloodshot thing, I wasn't thinking do it one to one, you know, no. then the new bloodshot came out in the, you know, 2010s and I was like, well, like all like Marvel, like great comic book history, you have different interpretations of the character, different yeah. artists, different writers, different canons, you know, so take a bit from both, take a bit from the original 90s stuff, take a bit from the new stuff. You know, I wasn't expecting a one-to-one adaptation, but take the interesting stuff that you do have and combine it into a new interesting movie. But instead, they ignore all the interesting stuff, take the very basic premise, and then just do a generic action superhero CGI nonsense movie. You know? Yeah. Like, what's the... 
Come on, it's all there. We don't ask a lot. Yeah. We always say, you know, with DC and Marvel and stuff, it's like they got like 70 years of kind comic of book history. Just even the marketing of this movie of wasn't... The marketing of this movie wasn't even really pushing that far for kids anyway. Yeah, but it's like... That's the thing about these kinds of movies. It's like they're, they're not really for kids and they're not really for adults. It's like that awkward in between, which is PG-13 in a nutshell, the awkward in between. At least that's what it's become. Like, it's not, it's for no one, you know? Like, if it was marketed as a John Wick style sci fi movie, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, a, the sci fi version of John Wick. That's cool. People would have been, been on, cool. I would have been yeah. on board. Yeah. But instead, it's like, well, what is this? Is it serious action? Is it, you know, a revenge movie? Is it sci fi? Is it, is it, is it Ant Man and the Wasp? Because that guy had fucking oct- <laughs> Dr. Octopus legs or something. I don't know. <laughs> you know? Oh, like what a waste! We're all too exhausted for this movie. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah, I have to admit, like we all work retail, uh, and <laughs> man, like, look, it's, it's been a, it's been a tough couple yeah. of weeks. The world, the world is not in a good place. Do not give us this shit movie, please. Yeah, like come on. Like I understand, as we said before, it's probably it's probably being released now for a reason. Yeah. So they can blame coronavirus on yeah, and the poor sale on the poor, on the poor, sales. poor ticket sales on Corona. Which, you know, I guess fair enough, right? Yeah. If I'm, if I'm an executive, now's a good time to unload all your crap. Yeah. But it's like... Speaking of Corona... Now we need the good movies. Yeah. <laughs> if any point now... Yeah. Need to pick up... Well, need to pick up our spirits, but also we don't want to miss the good movies because we can't go out to see them. That's so That's why this VOD thing they're doing is interesting. That's um, good. But Disney's it, releasing Frozen like three months early on Disney Plus. Yeah. That's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, but speaking of Corona, who better to release a movie during this crisis than Vin Diesel, Mr. <laughs> yeah. Corona himself, yeah. which is which is also funny because Fast and Furious 9 was supposed to come out soon. That's been delayed, and that's like, been delayed a year? Yeah, like a full year till like April 2021, which I'm so shattered. I'm so... <sighs> gives I'm me, so gives me time. A friend of the show, Jake, who was on our last episode, mm. uh, I believe, he uh, he wants to watch them all. Before the oh, next really? movie. So, it gives us time to get him yeah. involved because I've started buying them all on 4K. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that that's the good thing about these movies getting delayed. It just gives us more time to catch up on things. Because yeah. I'll rewatch them all before. Yeah. yeah. Like, even James Bond, I was like, I, I've seen all the James Bond movies a million times. But I was like, oh, it'd be nice to rewatch them all. But I didn't have time because it was coming out in April or whatever. But then it got pushed back to November. I was like, well, maybe I'll have time. I'm not sure. I'll see. Matt, I'll, I'll, There's I'll, a lot of movies. Yeah, I'll at least do the Craig ones because that's the important to this Canon, movie. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, like too many movies, too many TV shows, not enough time. Video games, bloody hell. Oh, man. Yeah. I've had to like give up. Animal Crossing coming out this Friday. <laughs> How am I going to... Oh, look, I, that's all. Like I said, I've, it's been a tough couple of weeks. Well, that's my milestone. Yeah, if you guys get sick, just Animal Crossing all that's day, it. every Come day. Come visit my town. No coronavirus <laughs> in my island. <laughs> Hey, uh, Actually, there dogs, will be, all right? Dogs can't get coronavirus, right? That's it. No, they can't. It. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of Disney Plus as well, um, New Mutants is getting delayed again. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> fucking just wait, put wait. it on Disney Plus, you idiots. Wait, no, delayed, wait, wait, delayed. Uh, has it been done for ages? Yeah. Well, what? <laughs> I guess reshoots it, it, and tone yeah, shifts. Tone re-edits. Because oh, it was a horror movie. I know. And then it was an adventure yeah. movie, like a standard X yeah, movie. Yeah, superhero. Then it was a... Now it's back to being a horror movie, yeah. but I guess it's less of a horror movie than the first Yeah. Time. It's like, for, yeah, it was going to come out like year, like three, year, three years <laughs> yeah, ago. Something like that. God <laughs> damn. Just put on Disney Plus. Be done with it. Rip it off. Because no one's going to see actually, it like a bad day. Yeah. I'm like, we should, I was like, on one hand, we should talk about it on the show because it's so. But on the other hand, just out of spite, I don't want to see. I don't want to spend oh, money. There on was that X Men movie that came out. I'm like, I'm not watching that. What was that X Men uh, movie? Uh, what Phoenix? was the last one? Dark Phoenix. Oh yeah, like yeah. Like, Dark I, didn't Phoenix. I didn't see. I didn't see. I don't care about that at all. No. It's on Disney Plus, I think. Is yeah. it? Maybe. Mm, uh, now it is. Yeah, it's like that came out. No one watched it. Yeah. I have no desire to see. Because fucking they they fucked up the whole X Men timeline. They didn't know what they were doing with it. Now Marvel's got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still not sure how I feel about, you know, Disney owning everything. 
but they've yeah, got the X Men. We, we, we've talked about it before. It's <laughs> yeah, like on one hand, yeah, on one hand, it's great. You can do the interconnected cinematic universe. On the other hand, uh, Monopoly, homogeny. And now Fox isn't showing movies in theaters anymore. Yeah. Older films, Blu-rays aren't being re-released. God damn it! <laughs> God Take damn you! Back. <laughs> uh, and now movies aren't even coming out of the theaters anymore. Yeah. What's a, are we going to have a show next week? We'll see. We'll see. We'll let you know. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, there is a possibility that... Yeah. The, well, we didn't think we are going to make it this week. Next week, we hopefully, you know, come we're in. We're all hale but, and healthy. Yeah. We also don't know if they're going to shut down the, the studio, the radio where we record at. We'll, we'll yeah. work something out. We but can always I mean, go in, yeah, we can always can record the in the garage. garage yeah. Or we, we'll, if, yeah, I mean, we'll obviously keep it posted, but, you know... You know, keep an eye on the social media. Touch wood, next week hopefully will be our Corona special. That's what we're planning. That's what we're planning. But things whether, can change. Yeah. Whether whether that becomes, you know... Too, a little while down the line yeah. or too difficult. We'll, or, we'll see. I mean, yeah, keep an eye on the social media. And also, like, maybe even, you know, episodes might get shorter, you know. Might yeah. Do, you know, might do some half an hour episodes. But this is all just, you know, thinking ahead. And this is yeah, us just yeah, yeah. not we, sure we don't know. Yeah, we don't yeah. know how long this stuff's going to last. I mean, ho- hopefully, good friend of the show, Alan, hopefully, touch wood, yeah. might be back next week. Yeah. Um, so, we'll have, yeah. If, we, if we do a Corona episode, we'll hopefully, gonna, we'll have hopefully, him on as our medical expert. Yeah. <laughs> expert in air quotes. <laughs> um, he's going to drive, right? He's not going to catch a plane. <laughs> no, I think he's flying. Oh, God. Because if he has to go <laughs> okay, to... Okay, no, he, he's, not, he's uninvited from the show because I don't want to get sick. <laughs> if Because um, if he has to go back to uni quickly, yeah. it's like he has to. Yeah, yeah. Because they don't know if they're going to shut down the uni. They don't know if they're going to shut down. Yeah. I know he's rural. Week, every year, med students, um, at least in the first year, have to go spend a week in a rural community mm. learning how their health system works and helping out. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a good thing to do. Yeah. Uh, you know, helping out your local rural communities or whatever. And it got cancelled in the light of the current situation because it's too dangerous. Yeah. Like, if you get a, a rural community infected with this disease, they don't have the health services available yeah. to cope, Isolated, basically. yeah. yeah. Um, so, he's hoping to be able to come back for next yeah. week. Yeah. Well, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see. We'll talk about it next week and see how it goes. Well, he's he's lucky he, he didn't come back this week because then he would have had to see lunch. <laughs> 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 oh man what a waste like just the red eyes alone i was like it'd be really cool like obviously in this in the comic book he's just like white and has red eyes all the time and it's kind of creepy but it, like works for his character eventually that changes whatever but i'm like they could interpret that in the movie where it's like he just looks normal and then when he goes into fight like i said fight mode i, I you know, it's like they kind of do that at the end with overclocking but it's like they do it in such a way where it's like it's so like non-committal like he has black eyes with little red circles yeah, yeah. and it's like his skin is gray not really white look it's hard to make vin diesel's skin pale oh they could do it um, it would have looked yeah, a little weirder funny, yeah. i think it would have looked it wouldn't look the same yeah i think the sort of the gray is as best as we would have got with yeah. that particular actor this actually is really like you know how i said he's wrong for the role but it's the bit where he like takes off his shirt and he's got the white tank top we're at Raph, we saw it with our friend Raph. He lost his shit. <laughs> he was laughing so hard. <laughs> Why? Because Vindu's just always wearing just, a tank top? Yeah, he's just always like... <laughs> yeah. Actually, and that's a good point. This movie, like I said, <laughs> like I said, he's like not bloodshot. He's just Vin Diesel. <laughs> yeah. Like there are multiple points in this movie where he's just wearing a different colored tank top. <laughs> yeah. And it's I'm just, just like, is that all Vin Diesel? Like, yeah. the, is that all he wears? Like, it's but, ridiculous. But I bet you in, in pre-production, like Vin Diesel, now the uniform. His yeah. bloodshot's, you yeah. know, ideal look. That's, and Vin Diesel's like, nah. Yeah. That's the other thing. In the comic books, he's got like the cool combat armor and like, you know, but the, with the red he's like, circle. He's like, hey, hey, I'm going on holiday. I'm going to wear a tank yeah. top and flippy floppies. Oh, that's the other thing. <laughs> like the movie, when you, in, 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 in one of his uh, fake memories, he's in like the Amalfi Coast in Italy or something. Yeah, yeah. And I'll, I just leaned over to Nathan. I'm like, the only reason they make these <laughs> yeah. shitty movies is so they can go on holiday and yeah, yeah. like do a tax write-off. Yeah. It's like, but it's like comes back to focus. Here's, here's like, in true Vin Diesel, here's South America somewhere on the coast. Yeah. Here's... Hungary, yeah, Hungary, London. London. Yeah. It's Vin Diesel's European, South yeah. American, Spanish like obviously, shoulder. like I said, they shot it mostly in South Africa. But, but I mean, that's a nice <laughs> yeah. place, you know. Especially, yeah, you know. So, but yeah, it's like it comes back to the focus thing of like you don't need those exotic locations for a bloodshot movie. 
yeah, action, you know, James Bond action movies are great when they have exotic locations, Mission Impossible, whatever. But it's like Bloodshot, you can do a simpler Punisher style, like he's just in the city now, you know. Obviously, you know, he, there'll be, you know, his memories of like fighting in Iraq or whatever. But yeah, otherwise, you can just be, they can pick a city to, for him to play around in. In the original comic books, it's just New York. Like he, he was originally from New York and then he like, that's where he, you know, and that's where all the crime happens and, mm. you know, and then he gets, uh, you know, hired by the British government. He will like starts working for MI6 and so fight, starts fighting terrorism around the world. Yeah. And you can add the, you can add the international stuff, um, but it should be, it should be more nineties, like um, thriller kind of thing mm. and not, and not 2000s superhero movie. It needs to be more John Wick and less Ant-Man, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, because like, yeah, they they need a. <sighs> Other than John Wick, like, there was that period where John Wick came out, and then Atomic Blonde came out, and then we we're like, oh, maybe we're going to start to see big, bigger budget, you know, mainstream R-rated action movies. But other than John Wick sequels, no. if I'm not mis- if I'm not misrem- misremembering, nothing. The next big one is um, Black Widow. And that's going to be but PG-13. But that's PG-13. And that's very safe Marvel, you know, CGI. I guess I was going to say the Bond movies. But that's PG-13. Oh. And they're, they're very much well, I guess their own thing. Technically, the Mission Impossible movies, which they were filming back they're to PG-13. back. They're PG-13. Oh, are they? Yeah. Oh, just because they're well acted the, and well stunted. Yeah, those, yeah. those are good stunt movies. But I'm talking about like a... Action, action bloody movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a, you know, like a you know Terminator then, yeah. 2 or a Die Hard or a, you know, like even like Air Force 1 and stuff. Like just fun action movie, speed... You know, remember when action movies were just violent and fun? Yeah. You know, and they had lots of stunts and, you know, car chases and helicopter chases. And, I remember. Yeah. Like, Bloodshot should have been that, but with a white, you know, red-eyed guy who can regenerate and punch through yeah. walls and, you know, bloody hell. Yeah. You know what I had? He should have been like, someone should have been driving a car and he should be leaning out getting his face shot and he's like yeah, firing and he's at the still car firing. And, like, and you can see like the wounds yeah, regenerate like, as he's like yeah they should like, have done that that kind of like that's something that would have happened in the yeah. 90s like car chases where he's leaning out the window and yeah, stuff yeah you know there's the bit in the movie where he, he's gonna get in the car and the hacker guy's like don't get in that one get in this one there's no mechanical parts I was like, there, there should, there's no point in the movie where he uses his nanites to like talk to technology. I'm yeah. like, that, that would have been a fun action scene mm. where he's like driving, you know, he's chasing a bad guy, yeah. drives up next to the bad guy and uses his nanites to disable the bad guy's car and the <laughs> bad guy's car sto- just stops and flips. It's a little slapsticky though, but he'd be like, nanites take the wheel and he like... <laughs> oh, no, yeah. <laughs> you know no, I mean? see, they, they change it in, in the... In, that would have been kind in, of funny yeah, in, the, in the comic books, his nanites don't really come out of his body unless he bleeds. No, I mean like if it was an electronic one, like his nanites oh, take yeah, control yeah, of, yeah. The, of no, the, exactly. the computer. Yeah, he could have so done that. The car's driving itself. Yeah, that would have been... Like, Leaning out the window, that, shooting That would have been fun, actually. Yeah, like, yeah. You see the steering wheel moving? It's yeah. like the nanites are, like, controlling it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you know, or, like, like a, a he could be, like, next to a bad guy, uh, and the bad guy doesn't know he's there to attack him or whatever, um, and the bad guy's on the phone, and he just, like, uses his nanites to, like, block the phone or to track the signal or something. Like, yeah. they never do anything like that. And this is simple stuff. Yeah. It's not like, it's not completely super original, but it's like, it's fun. Yeah, that's it. And they don't take advantage of it. Yeah, yeah. You know? Like, oh, they should, just, yeah. just a waste. Yeah. They, they always waste these properties. They waste the money. They waste the time to make them. They waste our time to our watch money, them and yeah. review them. <laughs> you know? Bloody hell. Fuck you, Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. I could talk about the comics all day, but I don't know if there's anything else to mention with the movie. Like, it's not not, not good. And, uh, I mean, hopefully one day, you know, they'll they'll make it the way it should have been made. They'll make it the way my, you know, 10-year-old self wanted, to the, wanted it to be made. Yeah, yeah. You know, one day, one day I'll make it. That's it. <laughs> the way think I want to make it. Yeah. Big, yeah. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god! Give me, give me, give me half the budget of this movie. I'll make a fucking better Bloodshot movie. Yeah, yeah. Bastards. yeah. And yeah, they're gonna fuck up all the other Valiant characters, and I don't know who owned the rights to the other one because I know they were trying to make a cinematic universe, and that didn't pan out. So hopefully they don't. Because that's a, that's another thing. Like we were talking about um, Birds of Prey, it's like they screw it up. 
now it's like there's a cooling off period. They can't make another good Birds of Prey movie. Mm. You know, any sequels they make are going to be bad, any spin-offs. So it's like they can't reboot it for another few years. You know, like they can't make another Bloodshot movie now for what, five years? Yeah, probably. I mean they they technically can. And no, they, not what you mean. Would. Like, it, but you know what I mean. Yeah. It, yeah, like people would just be like, "Oh, they're doing it again." No one liked it in the first place. No one knows what who that guy is. But it's like now we have to wait. If there is eventually going to be a good adaptation, yeah. we have to wait now. That's that that's that's the other side effect to this. All these crappy movies coming out. That's like, well, now I have to wait until they make the good version. Yeah, you know, you know. I think when we were talking about Pet Cemetery. I was like, the original was okay, remake was okay, and they were 30 years apart. We're I'm still like, waiting for the definitive Yeah, it's like, I want the definitive, That's maybe it. in another 30 years, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we really lucked out with Dr. Sleep, didn't we? Oh, you know what we can review in this dry spell? The director's cut. That's come out on Blu-ray. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 4K? Uh, no, the director's cut is only on Blu-ray. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why they do... Yeah, I don't know why they do shit like that. Okay. okay. They, and it's like if you buy the 4K director's cut... Do you it get comes, the- No, it comes with the 4K theatrical version and the Blu-ray disc of the director's cut. Oh, oh that's, that's right. okay. At least oh, I can still buy the 4K and get yeah. the director's cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For example, I thought you had to buy it separately. I was like, oh... No, yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, still... Yeah, I hate when they do that, though. But, yeah, maybe we can review that because, yeah. yeah, we really like that movie. But even we were saying, like, this could use a director's cut. Yeah. Like, there seems to be stuff missing. So, hopefully, that'll be, like, a more definitive version. I think that's it. You guys want to mention anything else? No, I'm no good. Like, I yeah. think we covered all the bases. Like yeah. we said, like we joked with, uh, really, it's bloodshot. Yeah, bloodshot. can't really... Bloodshot. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully... Um, I feel like we'll have some positive reviews in the, in in the oh. um, term, in terms of the 2020 yeah. movies. I think we will, so far um, I don't think we've had. Any I was going to say we reviews. would, but things getting delayed, so who knows? Yeah, what I'm going I'm gonna actually go check what movies we've reviewed because I can't remember off the top of my head. I think out oh, like uh, this year I'm talking about. Yeah, I think onward will get a positive review. Onward, yeah, the Pixar, yeah, yeah, I think that'll get a positive review. Yeah, I don't know if Bond's coming out this year. Or was that delayed uh, until next year? I think uh, December, November, November, December. I feel like that'll get a like a, a generally positive yeah. review, like yeah. more positive than negative. Was the gen- the gentleman was technically twenty nineteen, right? Uh, uh, no, I don't think it was. Was that this year? That was pretty good. That was really good. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll look that up. I'm pretty sure that was a twenty twenty movie. Yeah, but birds- that could have gone either way. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, like, that yeah. was an out. That was an outlier. Birds of sure. prey was shit. Uh, uh, Invisible uh, Man was pretty good. Well, first, well, first of January, twenty twenty. Ah, uh, yeah, it's uh, on, on on the fence there. Sonic, Sonic. Me and Calum didn't really like Sonic. Nathan re- really liked it though. Yeah, but other than that, it hasn't been a lot of. I mean, it's still early. We're only still early. a few months in. We're only, yeah. and all the other movies have been cancelled. Look, you know what, my, you know, you there's some years where you just have a just a great selection. Yeah, twenty sixteen. Yeah, <laughs> well, was yeah. 20, that was twenty seventeen. Twenty seventeen. Yeah. Maybe this year's just gonna suck. Yeah. Maybe 2022 is going to be the year where, like, oh my well, god! Yeah, if all the movies get delayed till next year. When was the Lighthouse? Oh, that would have been last year, right? That was last year. Yeah, yeah. there was uh, a few. There was a few good movies. A Color last Out of year. Space was that last year? I think that was technically last we year. We might but just it have to concentrate on. We could review that. We've also got um, Jan and Bob to review. Yeah, we still haven't reviewed that. Uh, yeah, I mean, we still we got stuff yeah, to we talk about. Stuff. Look, we can always do more digital stuff because there's always new stuff coming yeah, on Netflix, Netflix and some of that's pretty good yeah you there's know. a lot of Blu-ray releases there, there will be a shortage of theatrical movies that we won't be able to it review can't be helped yeah. can't be helped there's always stuff coming out on the streaming services oh, that yeah. we can review we always yeah there's always going to be new content we are reviewing too much yeah. really maybe a few good classics <laughs> yeah. and we're feeling you know yeah yeah inspired I mean that. yeah I, even if we don't have this show I'll be watching a thousand yeah, yeah, movies yeah. and TV shows I've been binging all the TV shows trying to get them out of unfortunately the way. we're in industries where we can't get stuck at home because People expect when all the businesses oh. are shut, we'll they talk, still get yeah. to go shopping. We'll talk about that at length next week with the whole the yeah, effects this goodness. is happening. Everyone, you know, I see on Twitter, everyone's like, you know, be like, it's this virus will kick your ass as not if we please stay home, but you know, we can't all just yeah. stay home. Well, I mean, we work with the public. We're yeah. gonna die. This this is maybe we'll end it here and we'll kind of segue into yeah. the next episode. But I mean, this is just an argument for universal basic income. Um, Welcome to the Tuesday Socialist Hour. <laughs> you know, but yeah, like uh, that way people wouldn't have to worry about going into work sick and infecting other people. 
you know, because... Well, I mean, I've, uh, there it, are people, go, I, work with, people I work with in my department who are casuals who are concerned that they're not going to be getting shifts. That's the oh, thing. See, if the if thing it is, goes into lockdown... The thing is, if I saw someone at my store that come in with, like, visibly, like, some like the flu or coronavirus, I would blast them and tell them to get the fuck out. Yeah. But, but at it's the like same time... If that time, person's I'm, a casual, then they're not going to get paid. And they, they, might be, yeah. they might be counting on that to feed their family or whatever. But I still would tell them to leave. Yeah, because that, I mean, in, it's the right. Yeah, it's the right thing, but also I feel like an effect. asshole. But at the same time, you're infecting everyone and the general pop in the general population. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I work on registers. If someone on the yeah. registers was sick, yeah, it's a big deal. Yeah, but we'll talk about we'll, this next. We'll, week. we'll talk about next week, week <laughs> when we go full corona. I mean, we bring beers into the studio. Yeah. And- <laughs> I don't drink, but you know. After this movie, I might have to start. <laughs> no, but then does Vin? Yeah, I, I don't want to vindicate Vin Diesel. Well, no. for, okay, we'll find some alcohol-free coronas and bring them in studio. Because <laughs> no, technically, no, we no, can't no, no. bring alcohol in. Yeah, I think she, that's true. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, technically we're not. Um, this is a joke. Man. We'll get some it's alcohol like, removed. I want to. Yeah, I, it's like if for Fast and Furious Nine, I'll drink all the coronas. Vin Diesel will take my money, but for Bloodshot. No Coronas, Vin Diesel, bad, bad boy. Yeah. Bad Vin Diesel. Bad. <laughs> um, all right. That's it. We'll hopefully be back next week. Keep an eye on the social media. Callum, I think it's your turn to sign off this week. Um, we should really probably just record one in outro and I should edit on to the end, but can't be bothered. <laughs> and also then I'm like, oh, then we have to share th- or three yeah. parts equally. I don't know. Thank you for listening. Like and share the Tuesday Review Facebook page. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Tuesday Review. Follow James on Instagram at Channel Drifter, where he talks about the movies we don't get to talk about on the show. You can find our previous episodes on your favorite podcasting app. If you enjoy automotive discussion, check out Matty J's show, Car Talk. If you like video games, check out uh, Alan, Jack, and Nathan's show, Sunrise Arcade. You can find all of these podcasts wherever you listen. Make sure to rate, review, and subscribe to the Tuesday Review on iTunes. It helps us a lot. Reach out to us on our socials too, by the way. Let us know how we're doing. Yeah. Stay safe, everyone. Wash your hands. Yeah. Adios, cousins.